My name is Katie Boone, and uh, I sat right up by the second post. We had a little office there for, I'm not really sure how many years, must have been at least 40. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, watch everyone that came in the door, and sometimes I, I did the, all the bookkeeping also. And uh, sometimes I'd get up and check them out if it wasn't another person up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, mostly, though, I just worked in the office. Well, my name is Joe Boone, Katie's husband, and uh, we've been married a long time, so we know one another <laughs> pretty well, and she really did a, a great job and probably saved the native hardware because of the fact that we worked good together. I was a so-called manager, which did not to anything, but I bought and sell, I, and uh, I had some help naturally, but that was my business. My business wasn't with, with the books at all, so that helped me. As time went on, things changed like everything else does, and uh, my wife, uh, our, my brother L.D. was in with us, but he he left and went and got another job, so it was it was strictly our store, Katie and myself. Where did you find Katie? When did you marry her? We married in 1956. Uh -huh. She came from the big city of Tillotobia. <laughs> Do you know where that is? Yes. Okay. And uh, we all Mississippians just about. I was born in Memphis, but only lived there a year and a half, so I consider myself a, 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 a Mississippian. Well, but, that's uh, well that's we, minute, we uh, um, met on a blind date, actually. Oh, on well, Friday the 13th. Um, Ann Hudson and Tommy Hudson. Have you ever heard of them? Uh, their names are familiar. But anyway, yeah. um, she was from Tillotoba. And um, she and Tommy were married. And Joe was just a friend of theirs. And so he called Lovely. and asked. And, you know, it was like I said, blind date. Well, That's know, what happened. I had not realized until you told me a few minutes ago that before blind date and before your family bought this uh, store, your family was from New York. Right. right. And isn't it ironic? It is. The owner now, that would be me, Deborah mm -hmm. Bailey, talking on the tape here, um, is also from New York. And I just learned that your family lived in 65th and Lexington on the east side of Manhattan, and I have lived on that very block. And that's right. <laughs> that is. <laughs> what a funny irony. It really yep. is. That's so what brought them down here from New York? Well, my daddy was in uh, uh, the timber business, or lumber business, or the wood business, because he came down here when they had a stave mill right on the, where the 51 Highway Bridge is now the new one across Yellow Bush River. On the left side was a stave mill, and they made staves. I don't know if you know what a stave is or not, but it used to be old wooden barrels that you put nails in and so forth and so on, and that's what they made there. And uh, that was owned by another company, Allen Cooperage Company, which also owned a plywood plant here. So, uh, he ran the mill, that's what it amounts to. So it sounds like there was a lot of building going on in the 40s and 50s. Well, I really didn't know. Uh, uh, what i tell you what broke Grenada open, in my opinion. I was, I've been here, say, 1931. And during World War II, Camp McCain came here, as everybody knows. And that really set Grenada on fire as far as business. And then they had an airport, air base, up here north of town. Had, a, I think the uh, Captain McCain at one time had around 100,000 soldiers. And of course they spent money and married local girls. <laughs> and also uh, the airport is 5,000 people. And uh, so they, uh, we were just kind of covered up unexpectedly as far as uh, a country town like Grenada was at that time. Because I remember when there was a gravel road coming through Grenada, not Highway 51, because I remember that was paved around 1934, 33. But anyway, time marches on, but that's what really set Grenada off as far as building 
And really, in all fairness, one thing led to another. Uh, uh, I call it Heatcraft came here and then other, other places, other buildings, other companies, and then our steel company, thank goodness. So uh, we're right in center of North Mississippi, as you well know, right on the highway, Highway 55, and a railroad goes through here. And uh, so actually, uh, we were in the right place at the right time. When did your family buy the place, Mr. Well, actually, it's been in two families since the origination of the building, which was established in, 19, uh, 19, 1867. Really? Right. It's that old? That old. Wonderful. And uh, the, their name was Doak. And we, now I didn't know Mr. Doak's name, father, but I do knew Mr. Doak, who we bought it from, is Roy Doak. And we bought this in 1945 and uh, been here ever since. And uh, my wife, Katie, uh, well, before then, we had a regular, up to about 1945, I was in high school, and I didn't really come in the store to about 1952 or three, so those years in between, uh, Grenada, I think, was getting natural gas, and, and there was a lot of other business going on which we, we, we were taking advantage of. Had about 14 employees, which was a lot for this place at that time. Most of them were plumbers doing work outside. Then when I got back out of the service, uh, came in here and started working just like I did when I was in high school. I used to come from high school, uh, after school, and fix old kerosene heaters and things of that nature, old uh, coal oil heaters that they used. What kind of merchandise did you and Katie sell? It was you and Katie after the mid-1950s? Is that when you took it over? Uh, That's two questions, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I'm trying to figure the years. Uh, well, I got married in 56, and uh, we sold the same thing then until I uh, got out of business because of health reasons. But uh, we were in the hardware business, 90% 90, 90 hardware. Then we got into the appliance business. And... Uh, that was really a big business, so we, we kind of eliminated a little hardware to make room for the uh, appliance business. Because and of course you have that 5,000 square feet upstairs. Right, we had all that, we, that's what the elevator's for, and uh, we would always take our inventory upstairs, refrigerators, freezers, whatever, and of course that left more room down here. And so the elevator broke one day, and. That changed the, the situation, so we kind of eliminated And our hardware was not going as good as, as it used to because of other f people coming to Grenada. So uh, we really, when we got out of business, we were really in the appliance business, I call it myself. Big time. Big time. And uh, I could have stayed here longer, but my health wouldn't let me do it. And I, I was here 50 years, and I thought that was long enough anyway. <laughs> So, uh, 50 years, half yep. a century, mm -hmm. you yep. must have seen some interesting things. Well, I tell you on. what, <laughs> you see a lot of good and bad, but I, I saw mostly good people in, in Grenada. And uh, the only time that it upset me since I've been in Grenada, and it's, and then, uh, it was 1966 when we had our sure. racial problems, mm -hmm. and that took care of itself, and that's over with and done. And it probably uh, changed a lot of people's lives too. But still, that that was the only time I could tell, and it didn't really hurt my business. I had, I still had good business. But well, and I understand that certain businesses were boycotted right. by um, those in the 1960s who right. were pushing for further civil rights. Right. But your store was not boycotted. Right. Not really. <laughs> Never was. I could say sometimes they would have to come around the back door to come in because they didn't want. To be seen. But uh, uh, really, it was, uh, <coughs> didn't last for two or three months. That was that was the best part of that. But, That's uh, wonderful, you know, because the, the people who write about it and talk about it from 
hindsight, right. blow it up to something huge. Well, it, it was pretty huge at one time. I mean, you know, it could have been real bad, but uh, it, it, uh, it just didn't ever, ever happen. I Did think, you have employees at both races? Oh, yes. We had the uh, Albert Guy, as we mentioned. Uh, he worked here 50, 55 years. And he can tell, <coughs> he, he was there, he was there much, <coughs> much earlier than I, of course. He, he was, but he was there in the 1800s. Uh, really? Right. And uh, he he was he stayed there, and, and he he did all the uh, work, like putting up old stoves and things like that. And this, at, at that time, and uh, kind of a handyman. And we employed other uh, uh, blacks that uh, worked outside, you know, like plumbing and putting in other and putting in some appliances so we we had both races here Perfect. over the 50 years that i stayed here <coughs> we had a lot of different employees come and go and i tell you something that we did i thought was pretty good during the summertime when school was out we hired kids that, that were getting ready to go to college or either high school kids to help you know deliver appliances or whatever and things like that so Maybe. we and, and we we did that too, and they always come back and, and uh, thank us for doing it, you know. My brother LD was working here too, I'm, I'm bringing his name up because I think he was mayor of Grenada for 12 years, I'm not sure. Oh, that's right, I have heard that. So everybody knew him a lot more than they knew me, but they knew me by Grenada Hardware, but he knew everybody. Did you do much credit business? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I saved three fourths of my business was credit, probably. And I told you the story about the man we saw, or we still see now, saying that Joe was the first white owner of a store that ever charged a black man anything. That so is. that is really, you know, strange. Now he said that I didn't. Uh -huh. <coughs> yeah. I mean, I thought <laughs> you weren't even thinking about it. I wasn't That's thinking about not right. No. I mean, every, he treated them just like, uh, we treated them just like anyone else, of course. And really, uh, I'm, I'm to the age now that, that uh, I used to go to Walmart more than I did <laughs> because I got a bad foot and whatever. But when I do go out there, it's always somebody comes up and hollers. And, and, and I'm talking about black people and a few white. Mm -hmm. Oh, how are you doing, Mr. Burns? And I, and I know the face, but I don't know the name. Of and as soon as they leave, he says, who was that? <laughs> <laughs> but it's been an enjoyable life, really. I met a lot of people, seen a lot of changes in life, and, uh, and, they're, and they'll keep on going, too. Do you but have any favorite stories? You must have a million favorite stories. Well, actually, offhand, I, I, I don't know of a, a story that would be interesting to the public, but uh, we were just no country hardware store. Well, but then you but, got overwhelmed uh, by the building oh, yeah. demands as Grenada was growing, and yeah. then the building, the business shifted Made, to yeah. appliances. Yeah, we, we, uh, we, uh... How'd the elevator break? Well, I was out of town one afternoon, and I was sick, and had to go to Greenwood for the radiation. And, and uh, there's another person here with my wife, because that's when our business was more in appliance business than hardware. I had sold two pieces of heavy duty hard uh, appliances to a certain person, I forgot his name, and uh, they were pulled up at the top. They weren't on the bottom. You gotta pull up the whole rope, then you gotta let it come down, you just loosen it, or pull it down, and let it slide down slowly. And uh, the gentleman was, who's helping us was one of my salesperson who I bought from. And I, I, I said, please don't let anybody go upstairs because of insurance purposes or whatever. And this guy who bought it, who I don't even remember, but uh, he, uh, he was just wanting to get them right now. And he went up there and pulled that lever and they came down like a bullet. Just dropped. And, and it just, just thank God it wasn't anybody. It the break. And no. that, that winded up. And it broke the elevator. Broke it. 
And, and we uh, can find in parts for it. And of course, those, at, uh, uh, those elevators, as you know now, they're about <laughs> obsolete, but still they that they were useful then because of transportation purposes. Well, and we have found a book. I think Jim showed you the yeah, he showed me the catalog. book. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping we can get it back in service. I hope you do, too. I really yeah. do. And we'll have you back for its christening. You can break the bottle of champagne on it. How about that? That would be great. <laughs> if you're willing to come but back. But actually, you now, mean, when we first came in here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I had no idea how beautiful this place looks as far as what it used to look like. I mean, you saved, in, you, saved, <clears throat> you saved a lot of stuff from the old store as a floor, I understand, and it looks, looks great. You, you, you wouldn't even known that it was an old wooden store, a floor with square nails in it in those days. They didn't have round nails, they had square nails. <laughs> and uh, now it's, it looks great. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I know this will be a successful place because it's a, the nicest place in the night, I'll tell you that. Well, we were thrilled to find that the ladders that you used to use right. up there on the ceiling were just tied up there behind the drop ceiling. Right, and when we, installed. that's one thing I didn't get rid of, but I didn't want to. Because of the fact I didn't know who was going to get it, and, uh, who was going to take it over, or whatever. And you can still use those ladders right down here. Absolutely. We're I mean, if, uh, We're if, you, if, you, if, you, if you just wanted to there. bring the ladder down for purposes of old age and let them look like it used to be, you, you got it. Well, we're going to use it. <laughs> We've got the show. Well, that's true. We're that's right. You got some beauty. And, uh, and that's why that ladder shelves. was there, right. because we had shells on both sides years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that worked out good. Well, but, uh, it's been a pleasure to work on this place. It's such a beautiful building. And I think it's probably uh, on the square, and I'm not knocking any any other building on the square, but I think it's in probably the, the best location of the buildings that are left on the square oh, yeah. because of, it's on the corner, right by the courthouse, a lot of traffic, and uh, Right by the jail. <laughs> right by the jail, exactly. So there you go. But it's really right down in the middle of the heart of Grenada. Yeah. 